Well, hi folks. Uh, thanks again for keeping an eye on what we're doing. Keep us honest. Uh, this mare, I told you I was going to go outside on her, but uh, she's done pretty good, so I wanted to show you the progress. In uh, a few days, I'm taking her back to headquarters, and I'm hoping to kick her out for a month and just let her relax, then get her back up when we start branding. So, anyway, she figured out the bit, and all she's doing is having these little things left over from the first day I met her. The bad, the habits of anxiety and all the things that were bothering about being overexposed and pulled on too much. But they're, they're, they're going away every ride, just a little bit at a time. And um, I'm really glad I went to the heavier bit because it really paid off. And she has thrown her head a couple times, but when she does, it's not real comfortable. So anyway, I'll, I just wanted to show you how she's riding. And uh, a couple days ago, we worked cattle in the alley, and, and uh, I was real happy with her. She hung in there really nice. See there, that's, that's her and old habits. And, and what I'm getting at is I don't care who you are, you got to take the time to wait for the horse. I'm waiting on her now to just clear your mind and not, see, not be bothered about anything. And she's learning off my leg that she doesn't have to get bothered. She, just stay calm. You're all right. You're fine. Don't worry about it. And something interesting you guys might enjoy is if you ever get to watch a video of the Doma Vaquera in Spain. It's loosely translated. They told me it means country riding. And uh, it's pretty darn impressive if you really watch it. They were, the Spaniards were a real inspiration to me in the Doma Vaquera. The classical stuff, that's nothing but tricks for killing peasants. But I'm talking about the real, real riding. And what I found out the other day working cattle, that when she, she doesn't have to be worried about her mouth, and she relaxes, she's going to have that much more cow in her because she can put that much of her brain, much more of the brain, to the job at hand. And it's going to happen. All this stuff's going to go away. So anyway, She's starting to relax, is what I guess I'm saying. And that whole transition you watch from my snaffle to this, that's what this was all about. That's what it was for. So that she would know to move off my leg. If I'd have started off with this bit, it would have been too much again. So that would be the second time she was overwhelmed. And now you can appreciate the cricket. You can hear it on this bit. I can slow it down or stop it just with my hand. Now she just took a breath. That's reassurance. That's why I know in my heart that she's still bothered. But it's just her brain. Everything else is fine. And she loses her mind. And I don't mean like humans do and going postal. I'm just saying her mind goes somewhere else when the pressure's on. And uh, that's, that's where I'm at on this horse. And somebody asked about the... How come our stirrups are turned so nice? Well, one reason is because we actually ride all the time. And I'll show you the other reason. And uh, hopefully it'll... You can do it. You can do it to any saddle if it's, if it's, if it's made right. If you want to get your stirrups set like we do, first thing you do, if you have a saddle like this, is you cut the rivets off and, and flip the Blevins buckle over. Point it the other way. Okay, the second thing you do is you get the leather wet from here up. And you literally twist it. Wrap it with a string and let it dry. Now, you can put your Blevins buckle in. 
and your stirrups turned. So out, twist, dry, put. That's how come our stirrups are like they are. Now, if you don't have the ability or the talent or the time or whatever, and you got them turned the other way, these buckles are the other way, then you can, in fact, get this wet from here down, twist them, put them on the fence, run a bar for digging post holes through it, hang a five-gallon bucket on the end of the bar on each side with rocks in it, and tomorrow, when it's dried, your stirrups will be turned. So there's two options for you. Now, I can't use a fencing bar because my hands start shaking when I get close to post hole stuff. So I just do this. And I'm sure you've already heard me tell you, this little piece of leather right here two screws and a pocket knife and you can make that and it may save your life because I've seen some guys get hurt really bad and I've tore up a stirrup leather hooking this stirrup right here onto anything and or getting a rope in between here now if you wear a tapaderas it can't happen the way they're made it covers it but this is how you fix it if you don't and I'll guarantee it's worth the time and the money to put that on and uh, don't mail me $29.95. Just get your knife out and a couple screws and fix your stirrups. Okay, I'm going to show you. You notice ever since you've been watching me how I never get out of a walk. Well, there's a point for that because I'm trying to build a foundation. But when I'm outside and I'm working, believe it or not, it's walk, trot, lope, up, down, whatever. But I want to show you when I have the opportunity, I'm not roping and like I'm working in the alley. I want to show you how I stop this horse and what, it, what you got to see. And the reason I do this is so I'm not up here stopping her and ruining what I've built. My hand is going to be here and I'm going to pull my rein through my hand. The reason my hand stays here is if you look at it, it bends the reins. If I didn't, it would be here. Now I would lift the horse's head. That's why my hand stays as low as I possibly can get it. Now, as soon as this horse stops, I've got to release because if I didn't, she would end up in roll core behind the bit. And that's not what I want. I want her to just have a nice clean stop. This also, for now, it helps put her on the hind quarter to stop. She still has a tendency to throw her weight onto the forehand because of the original problem of her pushing through a snaffle bit. So that's what I do. I just stop her there. That way, you see, it sets her head correctly without her flipping her nose up in the air. Now, if you watch, I don't have my left hand there. So pay attention. If you got a horse with a brain, when you put your hand down there, a lot of times they'll anticipate you once they get onto this. So you want to pay attention how you're cueing them. I guess the point of this whole thing is, is I've got to build a foundation. Oh yes, by the way, she needs to get outside, work for a living, cover a lot of ground. So all of this combined, you just keep adding little pieces. Now if I go out and make a two, three hour circle, I'm just covering country, walk, trot, and lope. Mostly walk, because it's depending on the train. What I'd like you to understand is that I spend about 10 minutes training going out, meaning picking up and asking her to turn and go around sagebrush and this and that. So out of a two, three hour ride, there's 10 minutes of training. The rest of the time, she's just moving. And I believe that's what makes horses change their mind and get handy without resentment. Thank you.